Welcome. I often talk about how much I love the seventh generation of gaming. It probably is my favourite one. I had an Xbox 360 back when it was current gen, back in the day, and when I decided to start collecting, unfortunately at that stage I'd already let my 360 collection go, which I'm still annoyed with myself for. There was about 50 games and a console, and I let it go for about £60. Anyway. But when I started collecting, I got a PS3, just because I didn't have one, so I wanted to experience it. But I've always had this nagging itch. Uh, phrasing? Just saying, you need the 360 as well. Because apart from anything else, the Xbox 360 has the most console exclusives that an Xbox console has currently ever had. And there's some real bangers there. But which one do you get? Because there's quite a few models to choose from. Well, let's have a little walk through them, see if I can help you decide. And to start off with, I'm going to have quite a short entry with the launch model. Generally, it was just referred to as Xbox 360. However, sometimes it did have the Pro subheading on it as well. And later on, even the Premium one. All white except for the disc tray, which was silver. This is the 2005 launch model. If you were lucky enough to get one when it first came out, this is the console you'd have gotten. Unfortunately, it's also the console which made the Red Ring of Death quite infamous. I really, really don't advise you get one unless you really want it for your collection or for some reason you want to be able to run an AV cable to your television instead of an HDMI. Just avoid it. And the same goes for the 2007 budget version called the Core Model. Looks exactly the same as the launch model, except the disc tray is white, it's body coloured, the same as the rest of the console, and it's got a lesser component cable, so the picture's meant to be a little bit of a lesser quality. Avoid both of these. The Core was launched two years later in 2007, but they're still just asking for trouble, in my humble opinion. I'm sure there's some out there which are still going and serving people well, but I just wouldn't advise getting one unless you want it for your collection. So, we're going to move on from those and go to the three which are viable options. Again, this is all my opinion, but I've done some research. The first of the viable options, I would say, was launched in 2010, and it is the Xbox 360 Elite. Distinctive for being all matte black, including the controller and matching headset. The most common built-in memory I can find seems to be 120 gigabytes, which is plenty, especially now the Xbox 360 store is closed. Not going to be downloading games, are you? But there is a caveat with the Elite. If you're going to get one, please get one from the second half of the run, because that's when they revised the motherboard to make it more reliable. And of course, reliability is what you want. I appreciate we're dealing with older electronics, but still, you want to give yourself the best chance possible. Easiest way to check, and this does rely on it being the original power supply, but most Xboxes come with those. If it's got a 175 watt, rating on the power supply, that's the first half, and no, avoid those. They're the least reliable. You want the one that's got the 150 watt power supply, that's the second half of the Elite's lifespan, and it should be that little bit more reliable for you. With the Elite, I would only really advise getting one if you can get it super duper cheap. Unless you're trying to collect all the models, of course, in which case this entire video is pointless because you're gonna buy more. Because the following two, they just make so much more sense, and there's not a big price difference. Which brings us to my Xbox 360. It's the Xbox 360S, often called the Slim, because it's a bit smaller than the original. Also infamous for having the touch buttons rather than an actual physical button. So if you've got a dog or a cat who likes to put his nose on your stuff, they will turn your game off. But pets are cute, so just let them get away with it. At this point, a little bit of self-indulgence, if you'll forgive me, but I actually got this as a birthday gift. Harry, Louis, Phoenix, if you're watching, which you're probably not, best birthday gift ever. They even got me all the Halo games to go with it. I'm a very lucky uncle. Now, I have been planning on buying one of these, so it now explains why they took such an interest in which one I wanted. Very sly. I like the S. I like the type of buttons it's got, just because I don't have another console like it. And generally, they are seen as one of the most reliable. Also, it comes with, again, this is the most common memory type that I've seen, 250 gigabytes, which is huge. Even if the Xbox 360 store were still open, I think you'd struggle to fill that. You can get them for 
60 to 70 pounds. Mine was gifted to me virtue of CEX. They bought it from there because of the 12 month warranty, which is never a bad thing with any electronic. I love the S. It's still loud, but it's quieter than the preceding ones from the originals and even the Elite. It is a little bit quieter than those, and it shouldn't serve you wrong. It's got a very good chance of lasting for many, many years. As with any game console, just make sure you keep the vents clean and wherever you're using it is well ventilated. You don't want it pushed up against the wall or anything like that. Common sense, but I thought I'd mention it. And then the final console is the last Xbox 360 model that they launched, the Xbox 360E, which reminds me of a VCR. And if you're Googling what a VCR is, you're making me feel very old. It was actually inspired with shape by the Xbox One, the one that took over from the 360. This is the latest one. Internally, it's virtually the same as the Xbox 360 Slim. That's why it doesn't make a huge difference which one you go for. Yes, the E is a little bit newer by a year or two, but when we're talking consoles over 10 years old, one or two years doesn't seem that important to me. Also, the most common ones came with either no hard drive or four gigabytes, which even if you're just playing games off discs, like I'm gonna do, it's just not a lot for your save files. Yes, you can get an extra hard drive and you can put it in exceptionally easily. Less than five minutes it'll take you to put that in. And you'll pick one up relatively cheaply, but it's just an extra hassle, it's an extra little expense, more money that you could be spending on games. So that's why I personally prefer the S, but you can't go wrong with either. It is important for me to point out, I'm just talking about the mainstream models, yes there were special editions, blah blah blah, and a lot of them did come with different variations of memory, I've just gone to mention the most common one that you'll find, because it just makes sense to me. But why would you want an Xbox 360 now, when Xbox 360 game prices are going up and up? Well, first of all I've got very bad timing, always have with everything throughout my life. Secondly. Xbox 360 collecting does not need to be mega expensive. I'm going to make a few videos as I collect some games for this system. I'm going to primarily try to get the exclusives for it. There will be some others that slip in, I'm sure, as well. And I'm going to prove to you that you can get an Xbox 360 collection without breaking the bank, if you know what to look for. But that's an upcoming video. What do you think? Do you agree with me that the S or the E are the systems to go for? Have you got an Xbox 360 that's been serving you well for many years and you want to share some maintenance tips so that mine will keep going? I'm always eager to learn. Hope you enjoyed this little video. I tried to keep it fairly brief and without too much of my trademark waffle. And I'll see you soon. Ta-da for now.